Okay, so we're going to evaluate this series where we've got the sum of all of the Fibonacci numbers squared divided by their corresponding powers of 3. And here, just to make this really clear, we're saying our Fibonacci numbers start with f1 is 1, f2 is 1, and f3 would be 2, and so on. And here we generate the next term just by summing the previous two terms. And our approach here is going to rely on effectively rewriting this sum in terms of itself in a way so that we can solve an equation to find the value of our sum here. And to get us started, we can use this recurrence relationship here. So we can express fn as fn plus 1 minus fn minus 1. So this is the next term minus the previous term, just rearranging this equation. And this is helpful because it allows us to express fn squared as these two terms squared. So then when we expand the bracket, we get fn plus 1 all squared plus fn minus 1 all squared minus two lots of fn plus 1 times fn minus 1. So now if we substitute in in our original sum in place of the fn all squared, we'll be able to write all of these terms in its place. So if our original sum from n equals 1 to infinity of fn squared over 3 to the power of n, we could write this as just a single sum of each of these three terms, but we're actually going to split this up into three different separate series. So this step where we break up our series into the sum of different series does strictly rely on the fact that this series is convergent, which you can show that this is going to be convergent if you're interested. We won't go into the details here. But this allows us then to split this up into the following three sums. So we'll have first of all the sum of f n plus 1 all squared. And remember everything's still being divided by 3 to the n. So this is our first term. Then we're going to get the same sum going from 1 to infinity. But now f n minus 1 all squared divided by 3 to the n. And for this last term we'll write it as take away two lots of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of f n plus 1 f n minus 1 again divided by 3 to the power of n. So you can see these first two series look an awful lot like our original series, but the second one is going to require a bit more work to get it into a more usable form. And for our first two series here, you can see we've got 3 to the n, but we've got fn plus 1, and here we've got fn minus 1. So we're actually going to factor out some powers of 3 so that we have n plus 1 here and we have n minus 1 in the second one. So if we want to turn this into an n plus 1 in the denominator, we're effectively multiplying everything in the sum there by a third. To, to cancel that out, we need to multiply on the outside by 3. So we've got 3 times the sum of fn plus 1 squared over now 3 to the n plus 1. Again, just summing from 1 up to infinity. And then for our next one, instead of multiplying by 3 on the outside, we're going to multiply by a third. So effectively taking one of these threes in the denominator outside of our sum, then we can write this as a third times the sum from n equals 1 up to infinity of fn minus 1 squared over 3 to the n minus 1. So now our values there, the n plus 1 and the n minus 1, match up. And again, we've just got to take away two lots of this remaining sum, which we'll deal with later. So now we've got this sum which looks an awful lot like our original sum. So if we call our original sum, let's just label this as capital S, then looking at this sum here, you can see we've actually got, this is going, instead of having the n equals 1 term, we would start at 2, but then we've got everything else in the original sum. So this is basically the original sum, but then we've subtracted the first term from this. So we can write this as S minus our first term which would be f1 divided by 3 to the 1, or just 1 third. So this is s minus a third, and I'll put this in brackets, remember it's being multiplied by the 3 there. And then we can apply the same sort of procedure with our next sum here. This one, you think about where does this begin? This actually begins at 0 instead of 1, so it looks like we're gaining a term here. But you can actually see that f0 divided by 3 to the power of 0, f0 is just 0, so we're only actually gaining a term which is 0. So this term here is actually just equal to s. And then we'll leave alone this second sum now. So then we can rearrange all of this to write s is now equal to 3 times, in brackets, s minus a third plus a third times s minus 2 times our remaining contribution. And then here, let's collect all of our s's onto the right-hand side. So we've got 
zero is equal to, so if we subtract s, we've got 3s gives us 2s, plus a third, 2 and a third s will write us 7 over 3 times s, and then we've got 3 times the negative third gives us minus 1, and then we've still got 2 times this sum, going from n equals 1 up to infinity of fn plus 1 times f n minus 1, all divided by 3 to the power of n. So if we now label this new series, let's call this capital T, so then this is going to be our focus next, can we express this in terms of our original series S, and then eventually we'll get an equation which we can solve to find the value of S, the value of our original sum. And again we're going to use this defining relationship to re-express this fn plus 1 times fn minus 1 term that we're summing. So if we have fn plus 1 times fn minus 1, we're going to first of all rewrite fn minus 1 using this equation as fn plus 1 minus fn. So we've got fn plus 1 times fn plus 1 again, but now minus fn, which when we expand the brackets this will give us fn plus 1 squared minus fn plus 1 times fn. And then the next step is actually we're going to take this inner fn plus 1 term here, and we can write fn plus 1 is actually fn plus 2 minus fn. So this is the same identity, but just moved along one. So fn plus fn plus 1 gives the next one fn plus 2. So now if we substitute this in, we're now going to get, we've still got fn plus 1 all squared, then take away in brackets we've got fn plus 2 minus fn, all multiplied by fn. You can see now we're going to get an fn plus 2 multiplied by an fn, which is going to be useful because we can relate this back to our sum t, and our remaining terms we've got fn plus 1 all squared, we've got a, these two negatives give us fn all squared, and finally take away fn plus 2 times fn. So again, we're working under this assumption that this series t here is convergent, but we can effectively now rewrite this using these three different terms as three different series. So we can express t as, first of all, the sum from n equals 1 up to infinity of our first term, fn plus 1 all squared, and everything here is still being divided by 3 to the n. And then we've got the same thing, the sum to infinity from n equals 1 of it's just fn squared divided by 3 to the n. So this is really nice, this sum here is actually just our original, you can see that immediately, this is just s, and finally we take away this term, so we take away the sum from n equals 1 up to infinity of fn plus 2 times fn divided by 3 to the n. So with this first sum here we can try and express this, make this look more like s, and just like before, we can multiply by a third inside all of these terms. If you divide these through by 3, we change this 3 to the n into a 3 to the n plus 1, which matches our fn plus 1. So we've got fn plus 1 squared divided by 3 to the n plus 1. But to cancel this out, we've added a third here, so we need to add in a 3 on the outside there so that this balances. Then this whole sum here we've already seen is just s, and here, this sum, we've got fn plus 2 and fn, where they differ by 2, just like our fn plus 1 and our n minus 1 there. The only difference is we've got 3 to the power of n, whereas here we've got 3 to the power of n, which is between our n minus 1 and n plus 1. So we want to turn this 3 to the n into a 3 to the n plus 1 so that it matches up, and this will effectively just be the next term in the original series t here. So if we want to turn this 3 into a n plus 1, we need to take out a factor of 3. So we write this as take away 3 times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity. And this 3 now gets cancelled out by dividing through by an extra 3. So we get 3 to the n plus 1 in the denominator there. And we've got fn plus 2 times fn still. So now this is of exactly the same form as t, but it's just moved along one. So we can write this whole sum is going to be t, but instead of starting with the term where n is 1, we're effectively starting at the next term after that. But we're quite fortunate here that if you 
actually substitute in n is 1 here. You've got f2 times f0 divided by 3 to the 1. And remember, f0, the 0th Fibonacci number, is just 0. So actually, this whole sum is just equal to t. And then we've lost the first term, but the first term was 0 anyway, so this is just t. And then we can apply the same procedures we had earlier. We actually saw this one earlier, didn't we? Where we've got the original sum s, but we've lost the first term there. And the first term was f1, or just 1, the first Fibonacci number, divided by 3 to the 1, so minus 1 third again. So if I put that in brackets, you can now see that we can get an equation here. We've got on the left-hand side still t is equal to 3 times s minus a third plus another s minus 3t. So taking our t's onto the left-hand side, we've got 4t is equal to, we've got 3s plus another s, so 4s, and then 3 and the negative third give us minus 1. So then we can conclude that t is just going to be equal to s minus a quarter by dividing through by 4 there. So then we can substitute this in and solve to find the value of s. So now our previous equation here gives us 0 equals 7 thirds s minus 1 minus 2 times t, and we can write t as s minus a quarter. So then we've got 0 equals 7 thirds s minus 2s leaves us with just 1 third times s. We've got minus 1 minus 2 times the negative quarter gives us minus 1 plus a half, or we take away 1 half. And then taking the half onto the left hand side, multiplying by 3, you can see that we've got s is going to be equal to 3 over 2. So now s was our original series there, so we can conclude then that the sum going from 1 up to infinity of the nth Fibonacci number squared dividing by the nth power of 3 is going to be equal to 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. But just bear in mind that our argument here isn't entirely complete because we haven't shown that this series is indeed convergent, so you would want to show that to be entirely rigorous with this. And it's really important to do that, because actually when I was planning out this video, I originally wanted to do this problem not with 3 to the n, but with 2 to the n, and I kept getting weird negative answers for a sum where we're just taking sums of positive terms. So it was clear something was going wrong there, but I hadn't checked if the sum was actually convergent. So it is really important to check and if you're interested, you could try copying this argument but with 2 to the n in place of 3 to the n and see where this breaks down, because the series isn't actually convergent, so we can't split up into multiple different series like we did earlier on.